Today's episode of the Outline Podcast is brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook like Kevin Hart's I Can't Make This Up and a 30-day free trial by going to www.audibletrial.com forward slash outline pod. Once again, to get your free audiobook and 30-day free trial, go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash outline pod. All right, let's begin the show. Hey guys, what's up? It's The Outline with Kevin Dwayne. Thank you so much for joining me for another show. I realize that I don't have a tagline like other podcasts do. And I don't know if I want one or not, but if you have any suggestions, let me know. For example, like uh, Trillificent at Gay Side Stories, theirs is LGBT all the time or something along the lines of that. You know, people have the little taglines on what their podcast is. My shit is just me talking shit about things that are going on throughout the week so i guess i could say that's the tagline i don't know but if you have any suggestions please let me know but nonetheless thank you for listening to my show remember to share with your friends leave your comments on all the places that the podcast is available including apple Podcasts, stitcher soundcloud which is still running thank god um google play music and the hub kevindwayne.com also if you want some photography and shit like that you can go to my site for that as well um i'm based out of atlanta um i will travel if you know you want to send me you know pay for my travel that's that's i can do that but you gotta you know you gotta pay up but you can find the podcast and everything kevin Dwayne there and you can also follow me on a uh, host of other places like Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and Facebook, blah, 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 blah. But I hope you are having a great week. I'm having a decent week. Um, my kitchen light is out. So I have one of those, um, what is it? Is it fluorescent lighting? What the? Sh- I don't know what the shit's called. You know where it flickers when it goes out in my apartment. So it started flickering a couple days ago and then it just went completely out. So I don't have a fucking kitchen light right now. And it's not the worst thing to happen because I have like the lighting over my stove. So when I'm cooking, I can turn the light on, on the oven. And then during the daytime, I can just have all my windows open and the light shines in the kitchen. I think my thing is I keep flicking the switch thinking it's going to come on and it doesn't. And it drives me insane. So I'm hoping the leasing office gets my request and comes and fix that. Like pronto. It's been, it's been two days, so tomorrow they will be getting the angry call. But um, yeah, I need I need that light back because it's 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 messing with my head. And when you pay rent, you know you you gotta have things running the way they should run. So that's that. Um, update on my whole vegan thing that I've been doing. Um, last week I told you guys about the lentil and rice um combination I had, and surprisingly I had quite a few people reach out to me and ask me like how I put it together and. Um, I know I said reach out for the recipe. I just didn't think people would actually ask me about it, but they did. And I was like, oh, cool. And I went ahead and gave them, you know, what I did with it. It's a very simple thing. So I've been continuing the whole, um, I like to say plant-based versus vegan. Um, it's, it's whole food plant-based uh, meal. And the reason I say that is because I'm not fully vegan. Like vegan people don't buy leather. They don't do anything that involves animals whatsoever. I'm avoiding eating anything that comes from an animal, if that makes sense. Um, I am anti-cruelty to animals. I get that. But um, it's not as deep for me yet but I am I'm not eating meat and I'm avoiding dairy and cheese at all costs but as I said before if I'm at a restaurant and something is made with or near milk I'm not gonna turn it away like I won't freak out so it's solely no meat and a lot a lot of vegetables a lot a lot of whatever the fuck that means but a lot of vegetables so I've been continuing that um and I've I've had some really great dishes and I'm I'm really excited about them. It's if anything, cooking is 
a little bit more fun when you have a um i don't want to say limited because it's not limited at all there are so many vegetables and so many um legumes and everything that you can eat outside of meat so it's not really limited but when you are under certain restrictions i'll say um it causes you to be very very creative and when you come up with these tasty things it's just it's the best feeling ever. Like you, you really feel like you did something. So uh, on Saturday, I made one of my favorite things is, uh, what's this? A spicy kale wrap. And basically it's my take on this, uh, raw vegan wrap that I get from this place called to Sealy's, which is, um, on the South side, but I don't live near the South side. It takes me almost 45 minutes to an hour to get over there, you know, on a bad day. And so I can't get there as much as I want. So I have to start making them myself. And so it's a combination of, I use a spinach herb tortilla, and then it is guacamole that I make from scratch. Then it's, um, the spicy kale salad. So with the spicy kale salad, you put that in the big bowl, clean it up. Of course, um, it's lemon juice, um, apple cider vinegar, olive oil, um, and I use this uh, vegetable seasoning. Then I add red pepper flakes, a little bit of cayenne pepper, um, and you just kind of mix it up together. So it's like it softens the kale because kale can be very, very rough and thick and it softens it up and kind of it maintains it a little bit better. And it, it's, it tastes really good by itself, too. Like you can just eat it like like that or maybe put something else next to it, but it's really good. So I put that in the wrap. Then I use um, its uh, roasted red peppers, um, tomato, sun-dried tomatoes, couscous, banana peppers, pesto, and then you wrap it in the wrap and it's it's delicious. It's, oh my God, it's so damn good. And it fills you up so quickly because kale is one of those foods that really, it expands in your stomach. So you get full really, really fast. And it's 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 filled with fiber like that all those vegetables in one little sitting i mean the highest uh, caloric thing in that are the tortillas and the tortillas i use are like 210 per tortilla but it doesn't really matter right now when you when you're eating like this without meat and stuff the calories aren't the biggest of deals like you don't really hear anybody ODing on vegetables it doesn't really happen that often you might be gassy but you know you might you don't really hear about people gaining weight from just eating too many vegetables you know what i mean it, it goes to your body differently because it's filled with um, nutrients versus being empty calories so made that on saturday and then i made my own version of sweet and sour chicken so i took um the the daya not daya i'm sorry i took the garden chicken strips they have they sell them in the frozen section at kroger Publix, wherever you go they're they're everywhere um and they're meatless but they're they taste just like chicken and so i took those strips i chopped up some red bell pepper green pep bell pepper um a little bit of garlic like just a, like a little clove of garlic and then um cook that in a in a pan and then i took some it was like sweet and sour sauce made by Kraft, and i just put poured that on there mixed it up and that was my sweet and sour chicken it was super good i posted it on my um my instagram too and apparently it looked real because a couple people thought i was crazy they're all like um chicken isn't vegan sir and i was like um it's not real meat but i'm glad it looks like it's real but it's not it's literally soy like <laughs> it's, it's not meat calm the fuck down but um did that and then i am going to make a sweet potato lasagna um, probably tomorrow or this weekend because there's a lot of steps to it, but it's easy because I, as I said before, with vegetables, you don't, you're not really concerned about like cooking. Like a lot of foods can be prepared very, very quickly, but it's a, a sweet potato lasagna. So it, it has like all these vegetables, carrots, mushrooms, and, um, I think there's, yeah, there's like tofu and that's going to kind of take the place of the ricotta cheese. Um, you use, um, lasagna noodles um broccoli it's a bunch of things and then tomatoes and then it's like um in, instead of like parmesan you would use grounded um cashews and i'm trying to wait for my food processor to get here i ordered a food processor last week so i'm waiting for that to get here so i can really start making like desserts and stuff but i'm really enjoying this whole i, I guess i I want to say journey, but I know that word is so cliche, but I'm enjoying it. I did the challenge last year where I did a uh, vegan for a month, 
Um, but now I'm adapting it. I'm really making it a part of my life. And um, even Christina was saying like, oh, how long do you plan on doing? I said, oh, no, I plan on doing this like long term. Like, I don't really want to go back to me. Like on Saturday, I went to the grocery store and bought all my food. And I just realized a lot of this stuff is going to last me a while. Um, and I got rid of whatever meat products or dairy products um, on Saturday. Like I got I threw them all out. Like a lot of them are going bad anyway, but I threw a lot of stuff out and I was like, no, I'm, I'm okay with this because it makes me feel so good. It's only been a few weeks, but I'm sleeping better. I feel way better. I'm not bloated. Um, like I'm, I just, I wake up early. I just feel so good. And it just has like this kind of overall good effect with your skin. You just feel very vibrant and light and you have tons of energy. And I mean, I, I hate talk. I'm not about bathroom talk, but I'm telling you, the movements are life. Like, it's one of those things where you have that much fiber in your system, you just feel like you, you just, your, your body feels clean, if that makes sense. It's like there are certain foods you eat that make you feel just sluggish and just off. And with this type of eating, you feel really, really good, like all the time. And it's something that I, I can I can't even describe. Like you have to just try it, you know, and I, I and the results happen very, very quickly um, as far as like weight. I've dropped a couple pounds um, because, I mean, the, the my calories are different. You know, I'm not processing a lot of processed foods. And I've also been I've been trying to watch my sugar as well, because that is actually my weakness. Um, sugar's always been my weakness. Meat was like no problem at all. I'm like, whatever, I can do that. Um, cheese was tough, but I got over that too, because they have so many substitutes for that. And um, But sugar is tough for me. So I've been trying to watch my sugar intake. So I, I'm not buying sugar in the store. So I, I avoid the Oreos. I avoid the snacks. But for example, if I'm out, I'll have a dessert or something. So I'll get it on a case on a case by case basis versus having it in my home. That way I'm not tempted by it because I will listen, I will tear down some gummy bears. Like I love cookies, candy, all that, all that stuff. I will tear it down like a kid. I have no control. It can be in my cabinet and I'm just like, yeah, no, I gotta I have to murk this bag like immediately. So I'm trying to watch my sugar intake, um, not try not to drink too many juices. Um, I buy the organic juice now where it's, it's like it's sweetened by the fruit. So the carbs are no more than like 15 grams and um, the calories are very, very low. And I'll have like a couple of that every couple of days. For the most part, I just drink water with lemon or water by itself. And it's been great. But I've also been pairing um my eating with intermittent fasting. So intermittent fasting is something that um, I researched. Um, someone um, that I was, I guess, dealing with was doing it and they were in great shape. And I was just like, okay, I wouldn't mind trying that. So intermittent fasting is basically, um, it's not eating, you know, you're in you, your body. When you eat, your body's in a fed state. And then when you're not, when you're not eating, your body's in a fasting state. It's pretty simple. So for example, when you stop eating at night and you go to bed, um, your body's in a fasting mode because it's processing all the food that you've eaten. And that's why the first meal of the day is called what? Breakfast, because you're breaking the fast. So intermittent fasting extends that cycle um, any up to 14 hours all the way to 24 hours if you really want to do that um there's a myth that when you don't eat your body goes to starvation mode and it holds on to fat and all this kind of stuff but that's actually not true at all our bodies are actually very very smart um the reason we store fat is because it's energy that we can't use our bodies take the fuel take the fuel that we need for us to have to get through the day and then it stores the rest as fat um, but when you stop eating and if you are like overweight or if you have fat on your body, this doesn't apply to people who are thin. It applies to people who actually have fat on their body. Um, if you have available fat, your body burns that for energy first. It doesn't go to your muscles. It doesn't, it actually burns the actual fat you have. So intermittent fasting takes advantage of that by extending the fasting period. So there's different schedules. The schedule that I'm on is called the 16, eight. 
So basically, I fast for 16 hours and I eat for eight hours. So it's an eight hour window every day. Essentially, all I'm doing is skipping the first meal of the day. And I don't want to say breakfast because with by the same definition, my lunch would be my breakfast because I'm breaking my fast. But um, I'm just skipping the usual first meal of the day. So what I the schedule that I'm on right now is I eat from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then I stop eating and I don't eat again until 12 again, 12 again the next day. And um, it's actually, it's been, it's been nearly a month that I've been doing this. No, 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 no. It's been three weeks that I've been doing this. And it's actually not difficult at all. Like even the first day, like I was a little hungry, but then your body adapts to it because there's certain, um, I researched this more. One thing about me is when I'm into something, I'm into it. So I just start researching and reading and watching documentaries and YouTube clips and just getting into it. So basically when we set a pattern of eating every day, your body gets used to that pattern. So if you're used to eating in the morning at a certain time, you're always going to get hungry at that same time. So after a couple of days of me doing the intermittent fasting, I didn't start getting hungry until about 1145. And then I would be like, okay, I need to eat. But when I wake up, I'm fine. And what I do is I tend to work out because it's good to work out in your fastest state because you burn more fat. So that's a that's a great idea to do. I work out. I drink tea. Um, I, I'll have coffee without without any uh, cream. Um, you can you can have like diet drinks if you want. I don't I don't have them. I either have water, tea or coffee. And um, I'm like way more productive. I'm so productive in the morning mornings now, like I because I know I'm not eating until 12 o'clock. I'm literally working on things I need to be working on. So it's, it's great. But that coupled with the, um, plant-based diet has my body like acting right and looking right. Like I'm noticing differences in my like midsection, which is like a trouble area for many people, especially me. And I am noticing my chest kind of tightening up and everything's kind of tightening up like it should be. And I'm like, this is awesome. So I'm going to continue doing this. It's, it's been really, really great. So check out intermittent fasting. So, cause even if you don't want to try the plant-based diet, you can, um, you can still, um, with intermittent fasting, a lot of body builders use it and you actually can have a a lenient diet with it like you can pretty much eat what you want because you're automatically cutting calories because you're only eating eight hours of the day and you'd be surprised at how full you are after that first meal usually when I eat lunch I'm fine for example today I had a sweet potato some vegetarian beans um and broccoli I think for lunch and then uh, that was my first meal. After that, I had a few grapes. After that, I had a kale salad. I had some watermelon. I had, what did I have? I Oh, some pickles. I had like these, you know, the, the long dill slices. I had some pickles. Uh, I snacked on like peanuts. Like I, and it was just, it was me grazing because I wasn't actually hungry. But what I do is I try to, still build up enough calories because you're supposed to still meet your caloric goals so you're still fueling your body the same but it's just a shorter period of time but i i was fine but i just wanted to eat because i didn't want to be so hungry the next day so i eat to have the nutrition there but it's not because i'm hungry and your body just kind of adapts to it and it's just it's just really really cool so i recommend that to try and get it's it's actually very easy a lot of people skip breakfast anyway so it will literally just be continuing that but with um, determination and understanding what you're actually doing so those two together have really been rocking my world like i've i've been sleeping real good like i've been sleeping so good and I just like the way my clothes fit and I like how everything is kind of working out. And I think other people are noticing well as well. Like I've had people say, Hey, you know, are you losing weight? And it's funny because I've been kind of around the same size for a minute. Like the scale hasn't moved that much, you know, but for people to say, Hey, I just, it just really, it looks like you're really slimming down. I'm just like, that's funny. It's just, I think my comp, the composition of my body is changing because of how I'm eating and stuff. And like I said, it's less bloat and stuff like that. So 
that's that. Um, I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to get my food processor so I can really make some dope ass dishes. Like there's all type of things you can make. And I don't know. It's just, I, I, I'm really, really enjoying this. It's, it's a good time. And yeah, so that's that. So let's talk about the problematic 90s. So lately, I've been revisiting old shows and movies and programming from the 90s. Like before I record this podcast, I was just watching um, I Got the Hookup. Um, which was the Master P movie with A.J. Johnson and like Mystical was in it. You know, it was like 1998. And I watched that movie as a kid. In 98, I was 12? Yeah, I was 12 in 98. And I watched that movie as a kid. Um, I, I didn't have restrictions on what I watched. My mom always had this kind of view of like, I'd rather you watch it in, um, under my supervision and I can explain to you what's happening versus you go out and sneak and watch it and you do something stupid so i i've never i was never banned from watching rated r movies hell a lot of black kids i know weren't like that was just how we lived whatever so i remember watching that movie as a kid and being like oh this is so funny and watching it today i was like and i have not seen the movie since maybe 98 99 that was probably the last time i actually watched it and shit that movie was so problematic like there's fucking transphobia in it. There is, they're making fun of um, mental illness. They're making fun of uh, obese people, um, little people. Like I was like, damn, this shit is, of course it's misogynist. I was like, this movie is so fucking problematic by like today's standards, you know? And a lot of 90s programming was like that. I was watching uh, Moesha last week because, you know, I love Moesha. That was my show. Before they made Kim stupid. When they started making Kim stupid, especially like on the Parkers, it got, it got, it went too far. And even Moesha took a few hits like those last couple seasons because they did too much. They tried to make it like a soap opera and it was no longer a family comedy. But that's besides the point. There was an episode in season two where Hakeem had a gay cousin. So I was watching that episode last week and yeah, no, I can't get with it. Just the way it was set up, like, you know, he was just holding this terrible secret and he had to be outed. And then Moesha's stance, like her, she became super kind of cold to him and she went on a date with him and she found, she found interest in him. And then a gay, a gay friend of his from his old school came by and it was just like, oh, well, his friend's gay. So he must be gay, too. And then gossip was started because of it. And just the whole stance was just trash. And then the fact that Moesha was just like, oh, you need to come out. And I'm like, you don't control anybody's coming out. Like it was just problematic as fuck. It was so problematic. And I'm like, by today's standards, Twitter would have lit that episode on fire. And um, another show, which is probably one of my favorite shows of the 90s, have the whole box set right here in front of me. Funny to this day is Martin. Martin is an amazing, oh my God. That is a classic show, classic show. But Martin's character was problematic as fuck. He was chauvinistic, misogynistic, uh, homo antagonizing people like he did the most there were so many things in that show that were just like terrible by today's standards and i'm just like damn like well you know better you do better but shit it was so problematic but that was the 90s you know that's that was most of the programming and but even before that it was based off of stereotypes and based on what people thought things should be and that moves me into the idea of sensitivity. There is this um, this running thread that I I agree with it maybe thirty five percent, but the other side I'm like, yeah, no, I'm actually batting for the people who are fighting for themselves. People have this idea that people are too sensitive today. Everyone's like, oh, everybody's so sensitive. Nobody can take a joke. Um, it's not that serious. God, everybody's so sensitive. I'm like, okay, yes, there are some things where people are taking things too personally. And we have to be able to recognize that, you know, um, there are some things you're like, okay, it's not that deep. You know, but anytime it deals with um, oppression or someone losing their lives or anything like that, that's not people being sensitive. That's them fighting for their fucking equality. 
We used to live in a time, and hell, we still kind of live in it. It's just different now. But we used to live in a time where certain groups of people, gay, trans, black, Mexican, whatever, or I think it's Hispanic, I'm sorry, Hispanic, um, anyone, any marginalized group could be beaten, killed, made fun of, um, special, special needs people, um, little people, they could be made fun of, picked on, bullied and everything. And no one would even bat an eyelash. It was just the way it was. And that's fucked up. So now we're in a place where people are actually standing up for themselves and saying, no, I'm not going to take this anymore. And they're calling shit out. That's not sensitivity. That's people standing up for themselves. And if you think that's being them being sensitive and not taking a joke, fuck you. You're trash. And it's, it's nothing worse than somebody who hasn't experienced anything, especially cis straight men. Like you don't experience anything. And you have to tell somebody else that they're being too sensitive because you're not the other end of it. You're not on the other end of being bullied, you're not on the other end of possibly being killed, you know, or possibly being hurt and things of that sort. So to say that sensitive is trash. I do get like people, like if you're a fan of somebody and you know, you don't like the way somebody said something about a show you liked. Okay. That's sensitivity. Get over that shit. But when it comes to actual like lives and, and equality, that's not sensitivity. Like feminism, like they're not sensitive. Like they're fighting for fucking rights that used to be ignored by people and people are still trying to take away from them. And so I'm very skeptical of people who think everyone's just being sensitive for standing up for themselves. Like I like, and it's sad because a lot of people are in house. Like I know gay people who, what what was I? I was, what, oh, I'm trying to think of the scenario. I think I was watching it. It was a video, I guess, a gay kid who was bullied, you know, and then somebody I was with was watching it too. And they're like, oh, he's just fucking suck it up. We all were bullied. Get the fuck over yourself, man up. Like, that's stupid. And I was like, do you hear yourself? You sound so dumb right now. <laughs> like you're projecting your past onto them. And because you went through it, you think everybody should go through it. That's what you're really doing. But ultimately, like, it's not sensitivity. People are just are tired. They're speaking out against their oppression. And I don't think we should be, think that that's not sensitivity. It's people standing up for themselves. So there's that. But that also moves me into another hot topic that happened in the last week. And I was skeptical on even bringing it up because it's been talked about ad nauseum in the last week. But it was the whole Breakfast Club situation uh, with Charlemagne, Angela Gee, and DJ Envy. Um, Janet Mock was on their show maybe a week and a half ago, if that. She was on the show, and of course, they're problematic because I think the problem when people, Janet Mock, if you don't know, um, is a trans woman and beautiful trans woman, my God. And I think the problem why people are struggle with trans lives is that they're always sexualizing them versus actually seeing them as humans and people's all the and people all they care about is their makeup their um uh, their genitals and that's all they can think about and that's so crazy this is an actual human person regardless of what they're wearing regardless of what they're doing it's a human person and that's pretty much how they treat the interview but to add insult to injury a few days later, Little Duvall was on the show and Charlemagne and DJ Envy set up this whole scenario asking him, would he ever like be with like a trans person or if he was ever tricked and stuff like that. And he said that pretty much he would kill somebody that did that to him. And so this caused an uproar. So people are like, that's fucked up. And, um, you know, they're not taking it. And this is one of those cases. This isn't sensitivity. He literally is pushing the idea that trans people should be killed because they're not being what they were born to be. And what I don't understand is because so many people jumped on Little Duvall's side, which I was very shocked by. But then again, these same people defend R. Kelly and Bill Cosby and every other problematic black person. So not that surprise, but a lot of gay people also def like tried to defend little Duvall. And well, number one, I don't understand this. People keep bringing up this idea that we're not having a conversation about 
trans women deceiving straight men into bed and stuff like that. Number one, that's not a substantial argument especially if you haven't experienced it firsthand. That's a stereotype and that's something you probably heard, you probably took from a small sample. Not all trans people are out here trying to deceive people and secretly um, have sex with people and trick them into having, that's not the case. A lot of people are keeping to themselves because they don't want to be hurt because we live in a world that kills them and hurts them and bullies them and doesn't want them around. So people aren't deceiving people, they're just trying to stay safe. Number one, so stop pushing this whole agenda that all trans lives are doing are deceiving people. Number two, deception does not equ- does not equate a punishable death. It just doesn't. So why do we keep having this idea that somehow, even if someone does deceive you, they don't deserve to die? And so even if your argument made sense about the idea of people out here catfishing or whatever the fuck you want to call it, that doesn't mean they have to die. And when you defend little Duvall, that's the fuck you're saying. These aren't just jokes. I'm so tired of people saying it's just jokes. Shit is never just jokes. People are dying every fucking day because these jokes make people numb to it and make people feel like it's not that big of a deal when in reality it is because Once again, niggas' masculinity is fragile as fuck and everyone feels like they have to try to push their manhood so hard and just like the idea of another man coming on to you and making you feel like you treat other women, it's just gonna, oh, make your skin fall off. And it's just trash. So the argument's been like, is the Breakfast Club responsible for Little Duval's uh, comments? Um, Yes, they are. And here's why. They set the shit up up they asked the question knowing they would get a fucked up ass response from him because they want those ratings and they want those listeners and they used Janet Mock as a prop the book that she just left there that she probably signed for them niggas they put up in his face and he's like oh yeah that little nigga's doing his thing that's fucked up you don't misgender somebody don't fucking misgender people it's just disrespectful it's so fucking disrespectful and it hurts me because there's so many gay men who do the same thing to trans people it's lgbt the t is not fucking silent we're all in this together and that doesn't equate us no like ow because we have to also understand that sexuality does not have to, doesn't have anything to do with being trans there are trans people who don't identify as gay and but we're still in the same we're in the we're in the subgroup rather we're in the group together we're a community but sexuality doesn't always align with being trans and there's this idea that trans women are just gay men and that's just not the truth it's just not and so there's always work to be done and it's just it's trash. Little Duvall is trash, but I th- I'm just getting tired. As much as I love the Breakfast Club interviews, I do. I love those motherfucking interviews. They have some of the best people on that show, but I'm kind of not feeling it right now. And like even with DJ Envy, he's he has a podcast um, with his wife, uh, Gia, and he's problematic as fuck. He's a child. He's a fucking child. Like he has tantrums. He has crazy ass, stupid ass, fuckboy viewpoints but somehow there's balance in it but it's like oh like i'm just tired of grown-ass men not growing up and not having some kind of common sense and just thinking with their dicks and and they're they're willfully being ignorant willfully being ignorant and it just drives me crazy so i'm kind of i kind of want to back off of their podcast as much as i love gia i don't really want to support it because that was fucked up and then charlemagne i feel like he's fake as fuck because he aligns with so many other gay people you know he tries to be cool with them and try to be open he has this huge platform but yet he does things like when they have Umar Johnson on there asking him about gay people, like he always does these things where he trolls people to make them say controversial shit. So I do hold them responsible. Angela Yee, I don't really know. She, I think she's just complicit because she stays quiet. She never says anything, but it's just, it's stupid. And Janet Mock didn't deserve that shit. And that's just that. It's just, it's fucked up. And I need people to just grow up like grow up and allow people to live their lives like 
Not all trans people are out here trying to trick you and deceive you. I, I mean, I see shit like that all the time, like on um on Facebook. Um, hell, somebody in my family posted one, and they posted it was a it was a it was a picture of Amaya Scott, and she put the damn caption, "Fellas, watch out!" Like, watch out for fucking what? Amaya Scott ain't did nothing to y'all niggas. Stop this shit! Stop this shit! And don't fucking tell me that you love me as a gay man, but yet you're also starting shit with people that are in the same community that i'm in like fuck that man i don't like that shit at all and it's the same when um like when you see like the little boys who don't even really probably don't even know like what they want sexually yet well i don't really believe that either because i knew i was like gay as a child but i'm talking about like little kids who like you know like the boys who have dolls or who have makeup tutorials i'm so sick of these men like straight men or even women post these videos on their Facebook of these boys with their makeup tutorials and saying, what would you do when you came home and your son was doing this? And literally what you're doing is you're opening up a form for people to expel their hate. That's trash. You're literally setting it up so people can come and leave these hateful ass comments to make you feel better about what you're feeling about it. Cause I know you didn't expect positivity when you posted that it's a setup. And that's what they did on the breakfast club. You people do this shit just so that people can like hate on them. And I just, I don't, uh, it makes my skin crawl. It's, it's, it's absolute trash, but I'm just going to move on from there because yeah, I don't want to do it, but let's just be respectful. Let people live a lot of shit that we speak on and hate on has nothing to fucking do with us and that's the sad part about it people are losing their lives for shit that have nothing to do with us because we're all being complicit so yeah um quick thing i watched this documentary on netflix um a couple days ago it's been in my list forever and i finally decided to watch it but it was called minimalism and it's literally talking about just that people who have decided that they don't want their life to be cluttered with things so um they rather travel and have experiences but as far as like material items they don't buy them the things in their homes are things that um hold value and um, I was touched by it. I've always heard about min uh, minimalism and I've met a couple minimalists and I always enjoy their homes. Minimalist homes are just so cool because there's so much space because they literally have, here's a couch, one couch. Here's my kitchen. I have the essentials. I don't have extra this, extra that. But it's always spacious and it's just, it's an interesting look and I've always been intrigued by that. And um, the documentary touches on it more and it had me thinking about all the stuff I collect now I have a small apartment my apartment will be like I feel like my apartment will be like a New York apartment but I'm in Atlanta well I'm outside of Atlanta but um I have a small apartment it's like probably 600 square feet if that like it's small so I don't have a lot of stuff but I do have essentials you know what i mean like i can't have too much but i have good storage here but even then i'm like what is some stuff that i can get rid of like i don't know if i would do a complete minimalist lifestyle situation but i i it did touch me about what am i holding on or what am i hoarding for example I have tons of cds that have been in boxes since i've moved to atlanta but i don't want to let them go because i mean they mean something to me. They're my CDs. You know, I've, I've had them since I was a kid, since I was like seven years old. So it's sentimental, but at the same time, it's like, Kevin, they're in boxes in your closet. Like, what are you doing with them? You know, you could clear up some space. You have all this shit on your hard drive. You have Apple Music. Everything is streaming now. Why do you need this space? It's the same with my DVDs. Now, my DVDs, I could probably get rid of a little quicker. I would keep all my music ones, though but I could get rid of like the movies and shit. I don't actually need to have them. And I just realized like, what am I holding on to that I feel I need? Like, I don't need any of the stuff. And it's the same with, I think with buying new stuff. Like it's about the idea of like saying no to buying certain things just because you have the money to buy it. Don't buy it because you realize none of this stuff brings you happiness. Now I learned that a long time ago. Um, you can buy stuff forever, and you realize you, it, it's fun for a while. Like, oh, it's so new and shiny. And after a while, you're back to feeling how you feel because material things can't bring, you know, can't bring you happiness. So there's that. But 
check it out. It's on Netflix. It's called Minimalism. It's really, really good. But it really has me thinking about what can I get rid of? At minimum, I need to go through my closet because I have clothes that I haven't worn since I've even been in Georgia that need to go. But that's just laziness. That ain't even me wanting to hold on to them. It's just me not wanting to put that shit in the bag and take it to Goodwill. But I'm going to get it done. But whatever. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to get into the main topic. Be right back. Hey there, hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Outline Podcast. I want to talk to you a little bit about Zipcar. Zipcar is the world's largest car sharing network providing wheels when you want them in 500 plus cities and towns, 500 plus colleges, and several airports. Zipcar offers over 50 makes and models of cars that range from environmentally friendly hybrids to luxury vehicles. SUVs, pickup trucks, cargo vans, whatever you need. It's a cost-effective alternative to car ownership, and you can drive cars by the hour or day with gas and insurance included. They're all throughout the city, and the listeners of the Outline podcast can earn up to $25 of free driving credit. You can go to joinzipcar.com slash outline pod to get said credit. Once again, to get $25 of free driving credit, go to joinzipcar.com forward slash outline pod. Let's get back to the show. Welcome back to the outline. So this week, um, I would like to shout out Jinkies Hardy for the suggestion of topic um, for this episode. So. As you guys know, big fan of Insecure, love the show. Um, Episode two was way better than episode one. Now, that was the meat I wanted. That's what I needed. I mentioned last week that episode one just left me feeling just like, eh. Episode two gave me what I needed. But without giving any spoilers, anything like that, because you can go watch it. There was just one scene that this topic is based on. Molly was starting to open up in her therapy session about work. And her therapist said that she noticed that she had a magical mindset, meaning her life is basically based on should. She says like, oh, this should have happened by now. I should be doing this. This is how this should be. And I think that was a moment for a lot of people watching the show. And even I was like, oh yeah, that's dope because I know what it's like to really feel like your life should be a certain way. So I wanted to explore that a little bit more. And with the nudge of jinkies, I'm actually doing this now. So thank you for that. And so let's talk about this. So I have definitely been a should person. Not so much today, but... I still have layers that I'm still peeling away, if that makes sense. Like, I, I'm i in a place now where I'm all about being content, but also still reaching for things that I dream about or imagine and want for my life, you know? But I do remember being a child and where these shoulds kind of started because as a kid, which I think is so crazy, if you notice as a kid, elders and guardians and parents... They're always trying to make you decide what you want to do as a kid, which I think is so crazy and out of this world. So you're like a five-year-old talking about, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be, you know, I don't know, whatever else, a professional bowler or some shit. I don't know. But literally, so you spend your whole childhood thinking these thoughts only to grow up and either you do it or you don't. And if you do it, some people actually don't like the field at all that they've been talking about since they were a kid because they didn't understand what it entailed or they do it for their parents and actually hate it and want to do something else. And that's where the shoulds begin. So as a kid, you know, your parents tell you, you should go to college. You should be do this kind of job. You should do this. You should do that. And so I think it embeds in us. You should get married. You should do this. You should do that. And so I remember that as well. So as a kid, and I imagined, and shout out to my mom for even, my mom never discouraged me with any dream I had. Now, I know she would say, okay, that's going to be hard, but it was never like a discouragement. 
as a kid at least i mean when i got a little bit older she was like okay kevin let's be serious but as a kid i was like you can do whatever you want to do and so all i knew as a kid i was like i'm gonna be a millionaire that's all i know i used to watch saved by the bell and i remember jesse said she wanted to go to stanford so one day i said i want to go to stanford my mom was like oh you'll go to stanford so i was like yep i'm gonna go to stanford <laughs> so as a kid i always thought i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to school i'm gonna go to high school and i'm gonna go to stanford and i'm gonna be a millionaire doing what i don't know i'm gonna be an actor um i'm gonna i'm gonna do i don't know what else i'm gonna do i'm gonna do something but whatever i do i'm gonna be a millionaire doing it that's all i that's all i said as a kid i'm going to stanford i'm gonna do some mysterious ass job because as a kid i didn't have like the fireman doctor lawyer thing well i think i may have said lawyer because it sounded good as a kid but i didn't mean that shit but you know it was what it was so i remember going through life and i'll never forget where i remember i was in middle school and i had another another parent kind of shut me down um and it was just it was my first kind of reality check in middle school we were writing some i never forget because we were playing writings on the wall <laughs> but i remember we were writing somewhere and we we're talking about college because it's middle school so you're like okay after high school you're gonna go to college and i was like i want to go to stanford and the parent kind of laughed at me. She was just like, what? <laughs> she was like, okay. She's like, okay, so who's going to pay for you to go to Stanford? She's like, I know your parents aren't going to do that. I'm just like, well, I can get a scholarship. She's like, okay, so all right. Like, and it, but she, it was just, it was discouraging as fuck. And I look back and I still want to be like, fuck you. But at the same time, it was a reality check for me too, though, because until that moment, I had never considered money. I never considered tuition. I never considered, you know, what type of school Stanford would even be. You know what I mean? I never considered any of that shit. But I remember her kind of taunting me in a way that made me think to myself, like, hmm, like, so it's not as easy as that I'm going to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? That was my first reality check. And so um, I altered as such. But looking back, that was fucked up for an adult to do to me. But, you know. I don't even want to unpack that right now. <laughs> so I remember that. And then I remember going through high school and then thinking to myself, okay, I'm going to go to college. And then I'm going to, you know, then after that, I'm going to get a good job. Now, I remember thinking, like, especially in college, college always, the way it was presented to me, and I think a lot of people will agree to this, college was presented as a, a way of just advancing yourself, like, higher than everyone else especially those who didn't go to college it was very much like this idea that you go to school for these four years you're gonna get your degree and you'll get you a bomb ass job right out of college you know in my mind oh let me just get through these four years and i'm gonna be making like fifty five thousand out the gate like that's just what's gonna happen that was literally my expectation in my mind now um there's no now. Actually, that was expectation. And that was a should. I should make this when I get out. So when I got out and I didn't make that, I think my first job out of college, I was making 40000 even. Yeah, it was 40000 even. And that was, it was cool. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is supposed to be like 50 55. Like I'm behind the curve. You know, I should be making 50 55. I mean, I got the degree, I put in the work. Why am I not making 50 55? But you know, I never considered entry level positions. I never considered the working your way up, even though you had, you studied all these years. You know, I never considered any of that shit or the, um, the, um, fuck i can't think of the um the fellowships or whatever the shit's called um i never considered all that shit who you know and all that stuff so then that was the first kind of or the second expectation that kind of broke me and was like okay this real life shit ain't nothing but then i have these student loans and i'm like wait so i went to school and i'm not doing anything so you fast forward to now here i am i've been out of school almost 10 years and hell like none of the shit i thought would happen would have happened you know i started over twice you know i had that one job that i made i was like a manager of a um karate studio and so i ran everything there and then i got laid off and when i moved here i started over in a call center oh my god oh making like 13 dollars an hour and i was a temp 
I'm working my ass off and I'm like, this is not how it's supposed to be. And at this time I'm like 26, you know, I'm like, this is not how it's supposed to be. And of course, you know, I worked through that and, you know, ended up going like permanent with the company and then changing positions and getting something that felt a little more reasonable for my skill set. But even then I'm still fighting the glass ceiling. I never imagined this in college or high school or as a kid. I thought I'd be well making like a really good salary but it's it's a grind and those shoulds fuck you up. And so that's career stuff. But not getting that pushed me into my passions even more, though, because I've always been a creative. So um, I still put everything into my photography. I, that bumped the hustle out of me. So it's important. I'm glad my shoulds didn't happen because that's what pushed me into doing photography and podcasting and actually doing the stuff that I love like corporate America is cute but I'm not a fan of it I do it because it pays the bills and that's what I studied and you know that's that's how I eat but my passion is in art and creating things and stuff like this so if it if everything worked the way it was it should have happened in corporate America, I probably wouldn't be doing these things. And I probably would actually be more miserable. More money tends to mean more problems. Like, that's a real thing. Like, I look at my my connections, the people who actually make great salaries and are doing things, doing big things in corporate world, and they're not the happiest of people. Hell, they don't seem happy at all. Like, they either drink or, you know, they're, you know, they, they have things going on. I won't even do that but they have things going on and I actually have a lot of peace where I'm at I do and it's just about being grateful and that's what it is it's like you can you can be content but still reach for more I definitely want more for my life but especially but I want it in my in my passions but it's not a should it's one of those things like okay I'm working hard and I just I just feel and believe that if I work hard enough, it will eventually happen. But there are some disappointments when it doesn't. But I don't think you should give up on those things. But you also have to be willing to adapt to things not working the way you intended on them working. Like, for instance, I felt like I should have been successful in my 20s. I literally worked so hard just trying to be young and successful. I wanted to be young and successful so badly. And I mean, success is different to everybody else. I mean, I was self-sufficient. I mean, I did my own thing and, you know, I, I had a lot going for myself, but it wasn't what I thought should have happened, but it was my own thing. And uh, when it comes to like love life, I don't remember what I thought love would be when I was younger. Cause I mean, I mean, I, I was growing up gay, so I didn't know how it was going to pan out when I became an adult, you know, was it a phase? What was going to happen? You know? And then I, I remember getting, being in high school and being young and, you know, starting to date. I did think that I was going to meet like one guy and be with them forever. And I was completely fucked up in the head for even thinking that shit. And, you know, and I was a hopeless romantic for a very long time. And that was a should. Like, no, this is how this should work. They should want to be with me. I should, you know, you know, and that kind of broke it. But then you adapt. And now I adapt. I allow people to come and go as they please. Like, you know, if you want to be in my life, you'll be in it. If you don't, you don't. But that's what got me to this point. So I truly believe in that, too. You know, you got to you gotta just kind of roll with it. But ultimately, this comes down to being content yet reaching for more being grateful but still setting goals for what else you want like i think the biggest thing for me right now is i'm in great health and my health is my wealth and i'm happy for that uh I'm okay with the role that i i work right now because number one i mean i work from home like that's comfortable as fuck. I'm grateful for that. Also, the idea that I have I have so much peace right now. If I was some CEO like I imagined or doing something something that paid a lot of money, I probably wouldn't have the same peace. Like I I truly feel like the universe has set up this life for me so I can be where I am. Like 
I'm good. I really am. And though my money's not always what I want it to be and my love life isn't always what I would desire it to be, I'm good. I have peace. I love myself. I have health. I have a roof on my head. I don't want for anything. I have a car. I have, you know, I I have insurance. I, you know, I have a job. Like you have to start counting your blessings. You have to really realize the things you have. The fact that I have working limbs, I can walk. I don't need to depend on anybody. Like these are all things that I am very proud of. And this is, these are my, these are, these are my new shoulds. This is how life should be. I'm happy. I'm content. And if you feel like you're not where you should be, start counting your blessings. Realize that you have a lot more than a lot of other people. Like, are you healthy? Are you breathing? Like, are you in decent shape? Are you like, do you have any ailments? Like, if you have your health at minimum, you're good. You are good. Do you have friends? Do you have family? Like, there's so many things to look forward to and, and look to as blessings. And that's where I'm at. I'm about being content. Fuck the shoulds. I, I certainly have desires and I'll, I'll always have dreams that I want to obtain, but I've learned to enjoy life where I'm at because I'm still having a good time on this ride. I'm still having great experiences where I'm at. And that's important. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, fuck the should. Fuck the should. What do I have? And what is happening? And how can I make the best of it? So, yeah, that's that. Um, That's the show. Thank you so much, as always, for listening. Please subscribe. Please share with your friends. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram, The World of Kevin. You can also follow the podcast, which is The Outline Podcast. If you're talking about the show on Twitter or Facebook, please use hashtag The Outline Podcast. The Outline Podcast. And um, yeah, that's that. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I will talk to you all next week. Peace out.